be welcome to beyond the gatekeepers this is bishop brown i am happy that you are here to be a part of our conversation and our virtual audience on tonight we have a powerful discussion for you those of you that are on facebook those of you who are on youtube and instagram and x and every place that we can be found linkedin we say welcome, welcome, welcome to you, family. Do me a favor, make sure that you share this Facebook Live. I was uh, working out some technical difficulties, and so I didn't really get a chance to share like I normally do. So if you all would do that for us, we would appreciate it. I see you all are coming in gradually and slowly into the room, uh, into the spaces and places where we are on social media. And so I am excited. I greet you and I say hello. I hope you are having a great Wednesday. Folks are already telling me that they're watching and I want y'all to share it, put it in somebody's inbox. Uh, got a couple of texts today about what people believe this conversation was going to be about, but you're going to have to listen and you're going to have to learn. I see some good folks coming in. I'm going to shout you out. But before I do that, I certainly want to bring on Bishop Flunder on tonight. She is the presiding prelate of the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries and the senior pastor of City of Refuge United Church of Christ. Bishop Flunder, will you come and please greet our social media audience tonight? Well, good evening, social media audience and family all over the country and world. What a joy it is. What a joy it is and oh, how good and pleasant it is for kindred to dwell together in unity. And what a joy it is to have the courage and the time and the spirit and the intention to speak into what is the reality of this current moment and to be able to do it with confidence be able to do it in relationship with our understanding of God and our relationship uh, and understanding of the divine. And to be in the company of this incredible woman you're about to meet shortly, who took the courage to really speak to the church and hear from the church what it really means to love all of the children who have given their lives, their time and their energy to the work of ministry I've been so blessed to be a part of her book, uh, Flaming, which I just love, you know, <laughs> and how it created the, an understanding of the relationship of people who were fringe, marginalized people around church, but bringing so much to faith and church and black church and Christian church. She's an incredibly, how can I say, prophetic, fearless anointed, called woman of God, and an incredible, incredible professor and the teacher. You're going to be blessed tonight. You stop what you're doing, get yourself a piece of pound cake and a cup of coffee. Sit down, get ready, get you a notebook, get you a pen that works so you can write some things down. Your life is going to be impacted and changed. God bless you for being with us. I like that. Get yourself a piece of pound cake and some coffee. I am. I just love that so, so, so much. It's wait. Uh, uh, Pastor Sue said in the background, some folks may need some bourbon. Ha <laughs> uh, It ain't nothing wrong with that. I Let's relate. Say, right. So we have. Uh, uh, I want to give some shout outs really quick. So let's let me do that really quick. Bishop Chella Belcher is here from Connecticut. Natasha Robinson from Chicago. Professor Natasha Robinson. Albert Reed from Colleen, Texas. Chuck Hunt from Aro, Louisiana. Maria Harris is here from Denver, Colorado. Dave Tony from uh, Jersey. Sherry Brown Jackson is here from New Orleans. Shannon Axe is on YouTube watching us from Los Angeles. Dr. Tony McNeil is here with us. God bless you. Giving us greetings from Atlanta. Arvel Alexander is here from Atlanta as well. Uh, Marlene McLaurin, Deacon Marlene McLaurin from Baltimore and the Unity Fellowship Movement. Uh, Herbert Jones is here from Boston, Massachusetts. Dinah Chapman is here with us. Cheryl Robinson Moore from St. Louis. Uh, Winston Williams is here from New York City. Serrano Solis is here. Uh, 
Angela Parker. Yeah, Dr. Angela Parker, you were with us last week. God bless you, Dr. Angela. Good to see you, and thank you for joining us. We really appreciate that. Atlanta, Georgia, if you missed last week's conversation, go back to last week's conversation and listen to this great woman of God. Yvette Busby is here with us, Pierre Diamond. Pierre is here. He was with us a couple of weeks ago. I love that all of our authors are coming back to watch to see who's on. Melissa Melissa McQueen Simmons is here. Queen City, North Carolina in the house. Darlene Franklin, God bless you, Darlene, from Dallas, Texas. Beverly Scott Hudson, Reverend Beverly Scott Hudson from Philadelphia, Jeanette Spees from Durham, Reverend Tracy Ruffin from League City, Texas, Deonza Spaulding, Darlene Connell from Queens, New York, Pastor Erica, York, Pennsylvania, Michael Leslie, San Francisco, oh, they coming in, uh, HDCCLA, Pastor Calvin B. Rome from Los Angeles. That You know what? I, there was a song years ago, Bishop Flunder, that he used to sing called Live in me, Jesus. Yes. Have your way in me. I'll be flesh for you. If you'll be spirit for me. Hallelujah. I just, those lyrics, such a powerful yes. writer. God That's bless my you. Brother. Yes, no, I know brother. you know him. Exactly. Yes. Lauren Eldridge from St. Louis. Thais, blessings. Jacqueline Tyler, St. Louis. Warren H. James, Reno, Nevada. Calvin Taylor Skinner is here with us. I believe he's in L.A., if I'm not mistaken, Boaz, Elder Boaz is here from Philadelphia. I am excited. The people have gathered together. They are here. Let me introduce our guest, who is not really a guest. She's family. She's been here with us before. She has done some great work, and we were talking. She is Dr. Alicia Lola Jones, Associate oh, Professor, Music and Contemporary Societies at the University of Cambridge in the United Kingdom. And she has written something. She has worked on something. She has, she's going to present to us this, this, this curriculum, this thing that she is doing. I'm just so, I've been seeing it all over Facebook and, you know, every now and then we talk via, via text. And I was like, I need to bring you in for this. The Vagina Dendata, Unlocking Mouths and Hips Through Gospel Sexual Healing. But before we get into it, Dr. Alicia, tell everybody we said that, that you want to say hello to. God bless you. Great day, great day. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. First of all, it's just so good to see you both, Bishop Yvette Flunder, Bishop Vanessa Brown, um, and Pastor Sue, who is keeping us all together. I'm just so happy to be in conversation with you all tonight. Uh, my, my spouse and I, Reverend Calvin Taylor Skinner, we've been just bubbling, uh, eager to have conversation with particularly you all, <laughs> uh, because the heart of what I'm doing really does center Black women and uh, the contributions that have been uh, overlooked, exploited, uh, the ways in which we have really given so much uh, with little credit. And uh, those times are changing. <laughs> there's, a, there's a new chapter occurring now. So thank you so much. And hello, Mother Shirley Miller. So good to see you earlier as well. <laughs> Look, you see those fingers, the, the long fingers is waving. God bless yes, you, Mother you. Miller. You. We're so glad that you're here. And uh, also to your husband. Amen. God bless him. And, and just being with you there in United Kingdom and doing his own work as well. Um, yes, there's some other people friend. really quick. Uh, Mike Willis is here with us, Bishop St. Louis. Jocelyn is here with us from Philly. Uh, Pastor Victoria from Maryland. Potia Henry, God bless you, from Queens. Melvina Car Carpenter is here. It's packed. I need y'all to keep sharing. IG, we have folks on IG too. Elder Sharon Gill is on IG. Folks are coming in. People are Valerie Davis from Atlanta. They're coming in from everywhere because they want to hear this conversation. But before we go into this conversation, the last time you were here with us, you had a book called Flaming and Bishop Pearson was alive. Yeah, He was yeah, alive yeah. and he was here with us. And um, that was about what, two years ago, maybe? Yeah. Something yeah. like that. And in that yeah, book, yeah. you make mention of Bishop Flunder and Mother Miller. Yes, and uh, yeah. such a powerful read. But since that time, you have relocated. 
Yeah, yeah, to, absolutely. To the United Kingdom. Yes, yes. I, I, I still I am processing the meaning behind um, connecting with you all at that moment. It was, it was really unreal and very humbling to hear, particularly after years of just trying to keep the nerve, trying to keep uh, an appropriate posture. It meant so much to connect and to hear uh, how the research struck or landed. Um, and of course, I, I joined the chorus of people who uh, were deeply impacted and, and still impacted by uh, Bishop Pearson's legacy. And in particular for our conversation tonight, I do want to lift up uh, what both he and Bishop Flunder joked about, but we're serious about in terms of um, holiness with regard to pleasure, holiness with regard to pleasure in the sense that um, because I love God and because I have full confidence in how fearfully and wonderfully we have been made, I, I want us to live in the fullness of uh, what God has given us and who we are as gifts. And I, I believe that this conversation continues in in his spirit and that spirit. And again, thank you for this gift of great conversation. You are absolutely welcome. And before we go uh, even further, I wanna talk about you as a music researcher and a public theologian in the United Kingdom. I think that that's important to set the framework um, on the journey that we're gonna go on tonight. Yes, yes. Thank you for asking that. You know, um, being here in the United Kingdom, I'm, I'm telling you, I the refrain for me has been when God says go, go. Uh, the the ways in which the relationships have been set up, the the eagerness and receptivity of the community, the students, it, it has been nothing but a God thing. Uh, at the University of Cambridge, I am a professor of music and contemporary societies uh, at, we call it the second oldest English speaking university. And of course, when we say that, we, we recognize the colonial implications of all of that. I'm also uh, between Oxford and Cambridge, the only uh, black woman theologian. I have uh, Dr. Anthony Reddy to to bring that to my attention uh, um, in terms of a womanist and black feminist sort of perspective. And so I often guide the projects, not just in music, but also in religion. Uh, so um, I, I teach courses like The Black Messiah, Music, Religion, and Activism, where I'm able to get uh, my students acquainted with the story of the transatlantic slave trade, which is not taught here at all. It is not taught here. They have no idea the atrocities. Uh, very basic, yeah, very basic conversations are had in the classroom. Um, but once they encounter folks who are bringing the thunder, they grab onto it. I will say that as I entered, some of the uh, individuals you all have had on this broadcast have already been cited in, in the text here. Uh, um, uh, Dr. Carrie Day, of course, everyone loves Dr. Day. That's my girl. Um, so many of the Pentecostals are being cited in these classrooms. Uh, and so many believers are sitting in these classes looking for uh, a model of, uh, I hope, a conscious and ethical approach to, to this research. And so public theology and music research, I, it, has, it has really come in handy. And I'm really thankful that I've had a supportive spouse who is there eager to also get in the trenches with me. We write weekly for the GRIO. That is our way of, of um, the GRIO.com. That is our way of remaining connected to uh, um, uh, the United States and delivering a message weekly that speaks to current events. And we have a supportive community. I got to shout out my mother whose birthday is this week. She, my sister, 
uh, have been continuous supports. Uh, the Skinners, my husband's family, without them and their support, we could not be this great. <laughs> And we are continuing the legacy that my parents established years ago. Absolutely. How beautiful is that? And before we get started, I just want to say you make us proud. You yes. make us proud. You make us proud as a family. Like you are doing such great work. And every time I turn around, it's something new. It's something fresh. Right. And, mm -hmm. and I know that the spirit is just downloading so many things to you. Mm -hmm. And it's just coming out overflowing. And so give you that shout out before we go all the way down into this conversation. And so like Bishop Wonder is like, well, what is this, Vanessa? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, you know, she's got something up her sleeve. It's going to be real good. And we talked a little bit about it. Uh, and so I'm going to ask this question so that we can also let the audience know what's really going on. What is gastromusicology? Gastromusicology. You know, I gastro musicology is my way of of bringing together a few things that I enjoy so much, which is music and food. Music and food. I'm in that space professionally where I'm trying to do the things that that spark joy <laughs> to evoke the Kumari method. Um, it's been a aspect of music research for some time, often associated with leisure and and recipes and you know um, the sorts of recipes that we encounter while doing anthropological work in various communities around the world. So there are music researchers who have cookbooks. Um, gastromusicology can show up in uh, the cookbooks that our favorite singers have, like. Patti LaBelle and Gladys Knight, or the restaurants that they have, like Gladys Knight and Ron Wine and Chicken and Waffles. It can also be a way of talking about ritual, like our communion. Um, it could be a way of talking about uh, metaphors within our music, fasting within our repertoire. Um, I actually look at gastromusicology in a, in a way that is uh, what I call critical gastromusicology. I'm wrapping up a book entitled Ultrasonic Tastemakers Towards a Critical Gastromusicology. And in this particular manual that I am uh, crafting, again, with Oxford University Press, um, I want to look at the foundations of tastemaking in the United States. I believe that if we were to really be honest about taste making in the United States, we would have to center black women. Uh, black men were the early cooks and I absolutely uh, uh, involve them in the project. But for me, if we were to really at the basic level, look at gastromusicology, we would have to look at um, those who we imagine to be the mammy figures within our history, the women who sang to children as they nursed the children, whether it was their own children or the children um, of their enslavers, uh, giving mitochondrial information, their biology to both children that they birthed and children that they, they quote unquote nursed. And so when I talk about this, yeah, I deal with the recipes, but I also want folks to know that literally without our intelligent sound, rocking babies to sleep while also nursing them, um, we would not have the nation that we have. We would not gravitate so much to black women singing, whether in background vocalists or um, lead singers. Uh, so I get that deep into a critical gastromusicology because I want us to think about what we are consuming as listeners. Each one of the chapters deals with an aspect of gastromusicology. Uh, one deals with fasting, one deals with the peanut butter and jelly metaphor that has been used to talk about the jiggle of women's bodies. Um, another chapter deals with kitchen salons and how 
uh, artists like Mahalia Jackson set the standard for Black women musicians to open up restaurants, gas stations. Uh, she had like a, a beauty, beauty salon, gas station, and restaurant combo uh, that she had launched in the 60s. Uh, but what we're going to talk about tonight is now my first chapter that deals with the intertwining of our appetites, uh, particularly our musical or vocal appetite, our digestive appetite, and our uh, sexual appetite in a, a chapter entitled The Vagina Dentata. <laughs> Bishop Flynn, I know you got something to say before I keep going. <laughs> so I'm gonna open the door and let you come. <laughs> Stand in the doorway. Don't come all the way through yet, because I know that you're about to do something. <laughs> well, I love it. I have to tell you, I think that um, one of the greatest greatest sins of the church, let me put it that way, is to make a difference between our sensuality and our spirituality as though they they uh, hate one another. And hmm. the beauty of what it is that, well, what it created was just an enormous amount of closets mm -hmm. and uh, a whole lot of folks, um, and I have said it before, I'll say it again, um, like the, the old parable or the, the old story of the emperor's new clothes. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole idea, uh, everybody was naked and everybody perhaps thought that they were the only ones. <laughs> right, right. It's a no, very, in, go ahead. I appreciate you said that because yeah. there was a seed of this particular chapter for flaming because mm -hmm. the men would say things like, uh, he wouldn't mind if I, he'd say, say his name. So the late uh, Reverend Bill McLean said that mm -hmm. he was taught that you haven't preached unless you have climaxed. And then mm -hmm. there would be women preachers who would say, I, he said that I, I have this issue and I've been made to feel ashamed about it. Mm -hmm. So I've been tracing it because of those sorts of comments. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely true. You know, I'm Pentecostal, as I say often, it's extremely sensual. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that there are other experiences, but, you know, you had to divide the sensuality. It was the holy sensuality and the unholy sensuality, as though it was not all you. Right. It was still all you. And the way that we gave, in, in the way that we think of Jesus, Jesus doesn't get sensuality for the most part. We keep, you know, kicking it out on him. And 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 the, 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 <laughs> the pieces that are part of what will end up being my story, which, which you all will know more about as we continue to write it, is, is called My Mother's Kitchen. Hmm. And, it, and it has to do with the theology that comes around when a bunch of black women are sitting around snapping peas. If you understand what I'm saying yes, and yes. exchanging, exchanging recipes and they start telling the real truth that brings together both the church and the world. Yeah. Because they talk about both in that holy environment. And it's an important conversation. So I, I think that somehow or other, in my conversations with you, you have such a gift mm -hmm. to be a conduit mm -hmm. between what is what's considered religion and what is considered profane. Mm -hmm. As though the God that made us did not also make, here I'll go, Bishop Vanessa, what lives between our navel and our knees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and made it skillfully. Right. And wondrously. Hallelujah. Right. And we're all grateful, hallelujah, <laughs> for the making thereof. But we cannot celebrate that because we have vilified and demonized right. that part. That's what the old ladies talked about when they were cutting the greens. And I remember, Bishop Vanessa, when they would tell me, now you go out, go out so outside for a minute. Because I knew what was fixing to happen. They were about to talk about something that they didn't think I was altogether prepared to hear. And I would just be panting, trying to get my ear 
to the door so I could find out <laughs> now, what is it they don't want me to know because I'm trying to know that so I can so I can know something right about mm -hmm. this thing that we're not supposed to know about. Not supposed to know about, not supposed to talk about. And not, not supposed to talk about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But all of us are human and we are about those things. That So I, I know this sister and I love her. I love her. Take that, take that profanity <laughs> from it. And let's move from a place where we can find a way to, to, and 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 a pro and a process and an opportunity to make holy what God has made holy, and to live it in a way that does not demean and destroy ourselves, does not demean and destroy others. I love this woman. She's a powerful, powerful teacher. Indeed. Hey. Indeed. Thank you, Bishop. Uh, um, there are more people. Thank you for coming in to Beyond the Gatekeepers tonight. I'm going to ask that you continue to share. Uh, this particular conversation, we are here with Reverend Dr. Alicia Lola Jones, and I see people already uh, coming in. Professor Kyle Wooten is here. Carson Shirk from Cambridge is here. Marina King, Archbishop Marina King is here with us. Belle Marie is here with us. Bishop Sonia Williams from Atlanta is here. Uh, Daly is in the house. Reverend Nancy Kingwood from Connecticut is here. Reverend Roberto G. Robinson is here. Courtney A. Brown is here. Rain Johnson, Professor Reverend Dr. Nakia Robert is here. Oh yes, they are. They have traveled to come into this room tonight, and yes, we are grateful. Dr. Alicia, tell us about the course entitled "Seasoning," and tell us what the inspiration of that for you know was for that particular course. So, so seasoning can mean several things. Um, of course, I do mean the conventional idea of food and being seasoned, but also the flavor that we bring as taste-making women uh, to the industry. Uh, but and, and lastly, um, there is a connotation of seasoning that has to do with torture. And so I do talk about uh, the ways in which we were tortured um, during enslavement uh, and, and, and sort of what that trauma uh, did to us. In fact, what we saw happen with George Floyd would be a remnant of a seasoning practice or buck breaking. Um, both of them um, are terms that I think also have culinary illusions. This, this course is actually inspired by precisely what we're talking about. Um, the ways in which people's lives have trickled into uh, the media, controversies around various ministers and um, their ability to be quote unquote disciplined. Uh, that has always been something that I've thought about. Um, uh, and for this particular chapter, uh, Vagina Dentana, Dentata, this chapter also was inspired by some sermons of folks that you both know well. I won't say their names, but in their sermons, they exhibited some sort of anxiety about women's uh, uh, anatomy. We can call it gynophobia, gynophobia, um, where they would talk about the woman found in adultery in their sermon and would talk about just her um, sexuality, but not the, the, the person with whom she was caught. Um, uh, I also uh, was just sort of tuned into uh, the ways in which uh, voice teachers talk about how we use our breathing um, and coordinate our pelvic floor with our singing um, or with our breathing. And I've shared with you all some of the lectures that, that I've, I've done. But what we know is that within 15 days of embryologic development, there emerges uh, the makings of our, our jaw or what we call the vocal tract. So where we take in food, where we breathe, where we sing, 
um, and a membrane that connects between the vocal tract to our digestive system and to our reproductive system. And that column, that fascial network is a part of what we understand to be uh, the resonating component um, the digestive component, but also um, it directly connects to the pelvic floor where we know there are nerve endings, a host of nerve endings um, where the cradle of life is for us. Um, and as a person who studied voice, I would always hear my voice teacher talk about the connection between my larynx, my vocal tract, and my pelvic floor. Um, and, you know, as an 18-year-old who was raised in holiness, some of what she was talking about, I didn't quite get. <laughs> and through this particular sort of research, I've actually um, seen how physicians are able to explain the connection between our our voices and our um, reproduction, our digestion. Um, this matters because uh, there are those of us who are um, are trying to uh, live abstinent, celibate lives. There are virgins still among us. And then there are those who are single and trying to figure out how they wrestle with their hormones or not. Um, and there are aspects of what we do as Pentecostals, as demonstrative people, that may be um, a part of the navigation and negotiation uh, that we need to kind of understand and know biologically uh, and, and handle with wisdom. And so um, I'm not trying to discourage people from being who they are. I just want folks to actually have the support as they go through um, various aspects of, of who they are. So um, I actually wanted to show a, a piece of footage. Can I show that yes, now? Yes, you can show it right now. Uh, so I'm gonna see if I get this right. Okay. Uh, or I will just... I will just go ahead and surrender and give this to Pastor Sue. Forgive me, Pastor Sue. You tried. You tried to. You tried to told me. Uh, starting at the one minute mark. <laughs> starting at the one minute mark. This particular video, and this is a very popular video. I want to show this video because in it we get a testimony by a beautiful Kojic soul who is talking about. Holiness, who is talking about um, uh, the ways in which uh, she has kept the teachings of the church. And then something interesting happens, Bishop, uh, a few minutes later, and it's, it's done out of a response to the spirit. Um, but on some level, if we understand the body, uh, um, she's making a negotiation that I think we could do better as pastors to help people um, actually work through uh, how we worship and how that actually can uh, be a temptation, help in tempting us, or how uh, we can actually be a lot more strategic. So many of you all will recognize this clip. Uh, and if it's okay, Pastor Sue, I'll, I'll let you know when to advance it a little bit, if that's okay. Um, and we could start it right here. Um, I, and I always see- I've been saved oh, since the age of 16 and I'm 23 now. I'm saved and I'm glad about it. I'm sanctified and I'm glad about it. And I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and I'm glad about it. Some of you all may have seen me running the other night. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God has brought me a mighty long way. You looking at a miracle. I'm from the projects. 
I'm from Lullabar, amen. I'm from the guttermost to the uttermost. I'm from the place where they say no good thing can come out of that thing. I'm from the place where teen pregnancy resides. I'm from the place where STDs and gangs and drug dealers reside. But you're looking at a testimony because in spite of all that I've seen, God's hand has been over my life since I gave my life to the Lord. I want you to know that I've been running for God and I'm chased. I haven't had no sex. I love the Lord. I love the Lord today. I love the Lord today. How many know the enemy tried to kill me? He tried to steal and destroy. When I was 10 years old, uh, my mother and I, we lived in an apartment community and the maintenance Again. man couldn't read English. As he picked here, up the wall. In the interest of time, yep, jump to maybe 5.15, yep. Yes, ma'am. You need shoes to a mama. What that way, mama? That's mama right there. That's come here, mama. So we let her run. Start. Don't dare let her keep on running. I'm just getting on. So let me unpack my, my concern. And this is both a musician and a pastoral concern. So uh, this young woman is sharing something that is very, very beautiful. And she is participating in some of the, the most rigorous parts of our culture, which is demonstrative worship. Um, uh, the Kojic Church, like many charismatic demonstrative worship traditions, spends a lot of time in physical worship to God. And in particular, uh, praise breaks and shouts and dancing. And this circulation of blood, this circulation of, of what we might describe as the transcendent power of God, this is, these are the conditions, the music making, the, uh, the physical activity, all of these are the conditions for the development of our hormones. Um, we need good blood flow in order to um, uh, be ready and uh, in order to respond to uh, not just the spirit, but to our appetites. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's interesting how there's a juxtaposition of uh, what, what uh, a holy testimony it is that she is giving. And then how do we also um, cultivate a worshipful practice where people understand the what next, um, the vitality that is actually a part of the sensual and sexual aspects of who we are. Um, it's not lost on me that some of the most sexually active uh, uh, traditions are the most uh, involved within demonstrative physical worship. <laughs> Bishop Flunder, any thoughts? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Especially right after a really huge, big shout moment. There's, you know, and, and I have said it, I'll say it again. That's when I get in conversation with some of the maids and butlers in these hotels at the end of the great meetings late at night. And they tell me, you know, I'm just, are you guys, are, are you, are you a church? And we say, yeah, but they, they know by their turning the rooms around. Let me just put it that way. Right. How that, right. how that, what that was felt on the floor. Right turned right. into something else in, in the secrecy of the rooms. They right. knew what happened. And the more and the bigger the the more the <laughs> right. because it comes from the same place. Yes. And one one part of it say that again what, Bishop Flood because it comes from the same. people skip over it. And the other exactly. thing about it is that people don't want it to come right. from the same place. But, but it, it comes 
same sensuality is that one is open, the other one is titillated by being closeted. The thing is that they don't know about the B selection. They know about the A selection. Right. But they don't know about the B selection. And I'm not I'm not saying that anymore. I believe that my sister here is tonight as a way of condemnation. Right. It's that we cannot embrace that part of us as though that part of us is de demonic. And the other part is equally as powerfully spiritual, essentially. So this is super demonic, super spiritual coming from the same individual. Mm -hmm. Those things when they do not homogenize. Right. It makes people crazy. Right. It makes, it makes all sorts of things happen in dark places where people are wounded, where they are mm -hmm. destroyed, where their understanding of God is convoluted. Mm -hmm. Where and it's not unique to Pentecost. You know, I watched it happen in many places. I've watched it happen in Catholicism. Right. It, it's okay to be taken by the same person with whom you have given your secrets to mm -hmm. in the chamber, in the place of confession. Right. And then that later becomes a, a situation that was right. titillated by the confession. Right. Until we get this right, until mm -hmm. we are able to embrace all of everything that God creates is created right. by God. <laughs> until mm -hmm. we can get these things homogenized, right. we will continue to both be vulnerable mm -hmm. and predatory. I'm going to stop. Right. Right. You, you both have have made great arguments. You've helped us to connect the dots between music, food, and embodiment, right, in this conversation tonight. And, of course, we are already addressing this particular issue that we are talking about now, about how appetites yeah. are yeah. stirred through worship. And, right. and let's push a little further, if we can. Yeah. How can the way we praise heal us? Yeah, yeah. 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 So um, already, you know, um, so as we think of, of um, singing and good preaching, uh, the same mechanism, mechanisms that are at work for good singing are at work for good preaching. We have to use, if we want to have longevity, as speakers, we have to breathe fully. Um, we have to engage our larynx in healthy ways, our vocal folds, as well as our pelvic floor. Now, I might get in a little hot water here, and uh, Reverend Skinner, my spouse, has already experienced how sometimes the saints get a little touchy about what I'm about to address. Um, but I trust you two <laughs> as well. Um, our worship can can actually, uh, when we are training our music ministers and pastors well, we can actually tell um, deeper symptoms within the body of Christ. You know, I had a conversation along these lines with another uh, host and the mothers of the church, I mean, were so upset that I connected sensuality and sexuality to the worship. We couldn't even get to like the actual ways in which we could heal, um, the actual ways in which we can demonstrate more vitality. Um, there are, for example, as I've been um, observing various congregations, following the work of people like Dr. Monique Moultrie, who um, writes about um, these sorts of movements, uh, for example, of like the Worth the Weight movement, um, and then when we talk about sex positivity within our tradition, there are a couple of things that I see that have gone unmarked. And I'm hoping that in mentioning these things tonight, we can begin a journey together in terms of healing. For example, uh, during the Worth the Weight movement uh, sorts of, of, of teachings, I would see things like people being 
uh, asked to drink green smoothies. And if people could put that in the chat, green smoothies. I know some of you drank these raw kale and spinach smoothies to the glory of God. You were doing something for your temple, right? And some of these folks were also, you know, subscribing to ideas of holiness. Um, but what we now know, saints, is that uh, as a result of eating a lot of spinach and eating a lot of kale that is raw, both raw, um, there can be an accumulation of what are called oxalates, O-A-X-A-L-A-T-E-S. And those oxalates can make it difficult for those who seek to have intercourse, um, bringing about conditions like vaginismus and vulvodynia. So there are those who are trying to keep their temple and they are reading these books by folks who aren't marrying nutrition with wisdom and they might find themselves in a pickle. There are others of us, as we're talking about the vagina dentata, looking at the connections uh, within our bodies, there are others of us who may be experiencing back pain, um, who may have tension in our lower back. Um, that can be an indication of unaddressed pelvic floor mobility. And also, um, uh, some of the therapeutic practices that could be incorporated within our worship can be things like twerking and deep breathing. Somebody say twerking, huh? Twerking, say <laughs> twerking. I've seen a lot of twerking. <laughs> we just, we didn't call it that, but I'll tell you, I was raised around for twerking. For, it was Listen something else. Then. Yeah. <laughs> but what if we could do it with the full knowledge that that mobility is actually, it is actually um, making sure that we indeed are not bent and broken, but rather we are, are, are fully using our bodies um, uh, to the glory of God. Um, also jaw tension. Um, one of the things in the lecture I share with you guys that there is a link between jaw tension and pelvic floor tension. And if your jaw is clenched, you are likely clenched in your pelvic floor, hence the vagina dentata imagery. imagery. That's so As good. And just are... really quickly, Dr. Alicia, your boy is up here. I know he, Ooh. and I love his singing, like he is out of this world. He's on YouTube, Emoja Roberson. Yes. That boy, God bless him. Come Amen. On. Anointed, anoint Bishop, you got to hear him. I'm going to yes. send you a link. Amazing. I'll cook me up. Yes. Good evening, Dr. Emoja. Um, yes. Yeah, so, unclenching the jaw and relaxing the jaw. If you hear people talking about jaw tension, we can assume there are other things at work. And so these, these getting nutrition, learning about our anatomy, um, there were folks that were uh, upset about linking sensuality and sexuality, and they said they do not get aroused in those ways at all. And that's possible, but sometimes people might be um, conflating the absence of appetite with holiness and really what's going on is um, perhaps some possible hormonal um, uh, issues as well. Um, we all go through them when we're stressed, when we have different seasons in our life. Um, and so these ideas about what holiness is, what, um, what worship can be, um, I, I think, get challenged with this. And one other thing, and this comes through music research. There's a scholar whose work has inspired me um, in my writing on men. Uh, it's a, a work in, entitled, You Are My Dwelling Place. And I've connected that research to this. Uh, her name is Dr. Suzanne Cusick. And she wrote an article entitled, On a Lesbian Listening to Music. And basically, she sets forth that if we, un if we untether our ideas of intimacy, sex from reproduction and understand it rather as the distribution of pleasure, then what if we called ourselves 
uh, our sexual orientation uh, musician. And when I think of how she talks about the distribution of pleasure, um, it really makes me think about how we understand the spirit moving about us. Um, do we, are we uh, able to think of unifying our spirit and our, our physical being in ways that fully realize what, how God wants to encounter us and that it is not sinful. It, is, it in fact is the indwelling and animating of the spirit, the activation of the spirit. And so um, I think definitely of, of what she offers. And I even say, you know, maybe musician is a sexual orientation. Maybe being a cook is a sexual orientation. I know for me, that is my love language. Um, Bishop Flander, it looks like you wanted to say something. <laughs> Did you unmute? <laughs> no, no, no. You just, you just bring so much. Um, this is beautiful. And giving it really uh, is, Bishop. It is. is. It really is. Giving us an opportunity to know and love our own bodies is so anti church. And it's, but it is so needed. Uh, it, a lot of what it is, and back to your original point in, in, in this part of what it is that you're saying. We're finding out a whole lot of things that are happening in and around the issues of church because we have, you know, the web and we have, you know, access. To, we People have taken pictures and they've gotten caught in different places and certain things. But this is not new news. And it is all so connect, connected to a fear-based religion. And we were taught to hate ourselves. We were taught to bring our bodies under subjection, just constantly, perpetually beating yourself up over and over and over, finding yourself in a place where you didn't want to be, and then repenting and crying and fasting and regurgitating the, the sin, and then finding yourself right back at it again is a cyclical kind of experience such that we couldn't vote. Let's, ha how, how, let's just talk about how our feet were nailed to the floor with that as the principle. People said you need to come out of sin. The first thought that you have is to make sure that you're not doing anything sensual. That's right, sensual or sexual, that's right. Sexual, sexual, sensual thoughts, sexual acts. Come out of sin. You need to be delivered from sin. It, it, if you stole from somebody, that wasn't so bad, but sex. This, you know, if you slapped somebody in the mouth, that was not good, but it wasn't as bad as sex. We, we, we're, we were sickened by it such that we were obsessed by it. Yes, and the consequence, and obsessed and possessed. Hello. The consequence of obsession is possession. Essentially, it is, it is, if people say you need to give that heart to God. Did you see the young lady in the video? When she started talking about her relationship with God, that she loves God, she, her crowning statement was that I'm not having sex. That she was chased, yes. That I'm chased. Not, not that I love the Lord with all my heart, my mind, so I'm in relationship with God and God is revealing God's self to me and beautiful powerful and loving and kind ways. No, I can tell you that I got the Holy Ghost just before I run down the aisle. I want you to know before I, before I run, I need you to know what I'm running about. What am I running about? <laughs> I have not had sex. I tell you what was missing for me, Dr. Alicia Lola Jones. She didn't say she wasn't having it with herself. Well, well, let me let me turn my mute on. Hold on just a minute. But so here's, here's wait, the, Dr. Alicia. You see how I told her, don't come through the door yet. And she all the way down the road now. <laughs> see, and this is the thing. So Bishop Flunder, may I have permission? I don't, I don't want I just y'all know I'm gonna be appropriate. This is go ahead, interest. go ahead. People I lift up uh, Dr. Cusick's work so that people will realize in many ways they are already having sex with themselves. 
they're already pleasuring themselves. When I'm doing research, it is a pleasurable thing. Um, one of the artists that I was sharing this research with, they were like, so that's why when I go home, I'm good. Like sex actually is not about your genitalia. And Lord, we can help somebody tonight. It is not just about your genitalia. In fact, for those of you who are vocally inclined, Dr. Emorja, we have talked about this, Dr. Jeffrey, Dr. McNeil. There are several erogenous zones, friends. Your larynx is an erogenous zone. Your armpits are an erogenous zone. Your breast, your sacrum, your groin. These are erogenous zones. These are zones that are also part of how you sing. Often when people are told to sing well, they are told to lift their chest. They are told to um, position their bodies in particular ways. Some men are told to um, use their sacrum. Some women are told to use their groin. And, and at the risk of sounding crass, one particular person who is Kojic um, told me as a man, he was told to sing from his balls. I've heard women say um, that they were told by their voice teacher to breathe in presumably where you take your man in. So these connections are made in the music making. And there are presumptions that are made in the teaching of the music. People know that they have to tap into um, these sensations. Various artists have said to me, they know that they place sounds into parts of their body. So yes, if we, if we understand, um, if we understand uh, intercourse as the only sexual activity, or if we understand masturbation or self-pleasure to be digitally or to be with toys, okay, then you, you might be chased. But many folks who are saying they're chased are actually having sex with themselves and don't realize. <laughs> it's good. This is good, good, good. I want to acknowledge the presence of a Dr. Birgitta Johnson, uh, <laughs> who I believe is another ethnomusicologist. Yes, well, right? she's a female. Yes, and then also Dr. Quincy James Reinhardt, who is on here with us as well. So I wanted to make sure that I, I shouted them out. Um, and we have a question because I can't, we, almost at time, but there are two things I have to say that we already discussed, but I want to acknowledge this question. And it uh, says, I wonder if obesity is so prevalent in the black church because we are eating when we should be satisfying our sexual appetite. Could it be, and this is Bishop Sonia Williams, could it be in our attempt to suppress sexual desires, we blur the lines or signals between sexual appetite and our hunger? Is food the pacifying sensuality? I would say I would it can say be both. I could. I would say that it can be a, a form of sublimation. Um, but if we are understanding this broader concept of orientation, I, I believe that it's also um, a form of self pleasure. Um, that those things that excite and cause us transcendence, that satiate our appetites, that is a part of our pleasure principle. And we are kidding ourselves when we don't include that in our formula for um, for sexual healing. Uh, when when uh, when we get trained as ministers, we learn uh, the various things that arouse people. We can understand if a person is sensual, uh, or if they are an aesthetic person. You know, do you need I, aesthetics? Matter to me. I, I liked you know tactility and and being able to to smell and to engage things. But then there are those for whom they are strictly genitalia. There are others who are, um, you know, people trend with this idea of sapiosexual. So uh, uh, connecting with people intellectually. There is There are lists and lists that indicate how people are wired. And um, it's really scratching the surface when we only make it about intercourse and we only make it about genitalia. If we actually had better conversations across sexual orientations, even the conventional ones, we would understand um, 
how fearfully and wonderfully we are all made. <laughs> this, is, this is really, this is a class, like really it is a class that she is giving. And uh, I know that there's good, there's already a lot of impact just based upon the chat <laughs> and the comment section. But for you, Reverend Dr. Alicia, what is the impact of this training that you're looking for? And I guess what potential conversations can emerge from this training what can we learn from each other? I think we're already doing it. We've already said yeah, it, yeah. but I want you to say it. Yes, Bishop. I, like you said, I, this is exactly, these are, this is the impact and these are the conversations. I really think um, the church could stand to be a little bit more creative in terms of the conversation partners. I think if same gender loving individuals um, we're able to converse with non-SGL individuals, we would be able to compare notes and people would be a whole lot more happier in Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You understand? <laughs> in Jesus' name. Particularly, and here are some statistics, friends. I, and I, I need y'all to hear this with your theological ears, your wisdom ears. I've already told you that or I've already suggested that we might want to consider a broader understanding of sexual orientation and how we are wired. We know um, the ways in which um, folks are seeking pleasure. People are seeking pleasure along same gendered lines. And for women, for example, there seems to be a higher success rate in same gender interaction. Same for men. That doesn't mean that skills aren't transferable. And if we had better conversations, we would actually know how to use the equipment that God has given us. Amen? Amen. Better conversations, friends. Better, better Praise conversations. Jesus. Yes. Praise Jesus. Jesus. Bishop Lund, I want you to weigh in right there. Praise, Praise Jesus. Jesus. Come all the way down the street and turn the corner. Okay, it's all of, all of it is true. And, and, and if, we can, if we can first know ourselves, because you you have to know you before you can have before you can share that with the person that you are essentially uh, blessed to have as a partner, as a spouse, as the person who is connected to your life intimately, emotionally, and spiritually. But you cannot you cannot really have what I would consider a divine opportunity to share your life and yourself and your body with someone if you don't know you. And let me say it another way. You really can't be blessed till you know how to bless yourself. Because you know your body, you know your mind, you know that you like greens instead of spinach. You know, you know what you know and you, and you know. And until you know, now, and a lot of people go into a situation, a circumstance in a relationship, Bishop Vanessa, and, and show sure enough, Dr. Alicia Lola Jones, Reverend Dr. <laughs> Alicia Lola Jones, they go into a relationship thinking that it, all of the weight is on the other person to do for them what they need. If you don't know, there's no way in the world that you can connect with someone and be in a real honest to goodness, honest, intimate relationship. You know as you are known, but you have to know that first knowing has to be you knowing you. If, if there was anything I could say to everybody that's listening here, to, you got to know yourself. And then, and just like you heard Dr. Alicia Lola Jones tell you what are the things that bring her joy in her life. It's not just intimacy. It's, it's it, you know, maybe she likes to plant onions or likes to look at a sunset or enjoys the snow or enjoys the water. You have to know. And then you can share that and homogenize that in some way with the person who may be your significant other in your life. But don't put that weight on them and don't put it on the church. Don't make religion That's responsible good. to teach you how to know you. You have to bring you. 
Yes. I don't go. To, I don't go to worship looking for me. I knew me before I got there <laughs> because I worship in the shower. Do you understand what I mean? In the bathtub, and just haul off and sing, praise and speak in tongues. It in in a all by myself because the presence of God is real and tangible and palpable. And it's not a farce for me. It is a part of my life. And so I have made holy my body. I'm not afraid of it. I don't teach it. I'll kind of get under subjection and all that different stuff. But I don't abuse it. And I won't let anybody else abuse it. It's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, listen. Know thyself. I uh, found out. It's a beautiful thing. I love it, Bishop. Every, can, can I say one more thing? thing? Yes, ma'am. And, and everybody, I want, I want you to say it where you are while you're listening to us. Everything I have is good. Oh, yes. Everything I have is good. All my, all my stuff. All my, all my things. things. All, all my things. things. Yeah, you yes. say it about yes. your own yes. self. Yes. Everything yes. I have Come on. is That's made real, Bishop. in the hands of a of divine, divine artist. Everything I have is good. That's it. That's good, Bishop, because if you don't believe it, nobody else will. You must believe that everything that you have is good. Self-affirmation. I love that. Listen, we have come to the hour and close of this conversation. But before we go there, please don't jump off. Because as I told you, uh, uh, this is a training, right? And... I know that you are looking, Reverend Dr. Alicia Jones, to give instruction for people to take this course. Um, and I want you to tell us how they can do it. I know that you are trying to raise funds uh, yeah, yeah. for the, you own a radio station. Yeah. yeah tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Tell us about keeping up the legacy of bridging the, the digital gap and tell us about what you are facing right now. I want everybody to hear and listen because we're going to ask you to sew. Mm -hmm. I'm going to want you to do that. Like at the end of the day, you can't come away with such a rich conversation like this that just really wet your appetite. It wasn't really just the, it was just the appetizer. It wasn't even the full meal that she is going to have to give. Right. And so I want us to be able to hear the whole conclusion of the matter. Thank you so much. I, I, I am definitely the product of parents who really invested in me and my sister, Reverend Angela Marie Jones. My father who passed away at the top of the pandemic, he left to us some radio stations and uh, my sister and I have uh, been keeping the radio stations alive as a community radio station, uh, set of radio stations in the uh, Granville County of North Carolina. Recently, uh, because of the political scene, we have found ourselves uh, fighting a legal battle uh, with regard to taxes for our radio station. We've been vigilant about them because my father warned us. Um, we have been very prudent with how we have run the station largely because uh, the folks in that county are agrarian people who rely on radio. They don't do social media. Many of them don't even have bank accounts. They pay by cash, they pay on time. They want to convene at the radio station. It is their community center. And while others might've presumed that a radio station would be shutting down during the pandemic. We had an influx of participation because these were people who view it as their lifeline. And um, given North Carolina as a political front ground, um, it is not lost on us why we would be uh, targeted with um, false um, uh, uh, a false tab with regard to taxes. Um, and so, we're in the court fighting this. We have all of our evidence that we are up to date, but we also know what time it is. We, we are uh, wise women. And uh, as I was preparing tonight, you know, I don't typically like to share these sorts of things, um, but I also 
know the, the level of stress it is. And I want to invite my community in. Um, we're just trying to round up uh, the remaining of the, the legal cost of this. Uh, as good stewards of my father's legacy, these people have really um, taught us a lot about what community is, and we want to make sure we protect that legacy. Um, yes. Tell us what are you trying to raise? Yeah. What are you trying to raise? Listen to Bishop. Um, we're trying to raise, we're presently trying to raise about 5000 to cover um, the legal fees uh, that have been trumped up. Again, we have actually paid the taxes, um, but this is, as we know, we've watched things in the Gullah. This is how people take people's land. This is how people take businesses through tax bills. And so um, uh, right now we're just trying to uh, um, make the ends meet. Uh, in that regard. So we want to raise $5,000. Mm -hmm. We'll give you the first thousand. Thank you. And Thank and you those of you that are listening, listening this evening, um, I believe that we, we put our money where our hearts are. Where, our, where we put our money in the places where the spirit of God says that we should place it. And mind you, there are people all over this country and world that are giving away their children's money to keep uh, idiots in the White House. They're, they're giving away, they're taking money from their houses in order to make guns available to everyone. They're, they're doing whatever they have to do to create the world that they would need to create. One of the great mistakes we make is that we will it oftentimes believe what it is that we have heard is truth that is setting us free, but we won't give to it. We won't, we won't put our money where our passion is. And I want to encourage you this evening. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Let's do what we can to keep in. And, and you have seen how we give at gatekeepers and you have kept gate, gatekeepers in place all this time this evening. What we're going to ask you to do, do your $50, do your $100, do your $1,000. We can do in just a few minutes, $5,000. We can, Bishop. In but just I want to make sure minutes. that we know, uh, Pastor Sue, let's come back to us, please. I want to make sure, Reverend Dr. Alicia, that you have a particular place in which you want us to, to give it. Tell us how, how you would have us. How do you want us to receive this money? Um, thank you, first of all, for your prompt and quick response. I appreciate you so much. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, PayPal, uh, Paradise Radio Network at um, Gmail. We need to put that up. Um, we can't hear then, you. Put it in the private chat. Okay. And then Pastor Sue will put everything up to show. Yeah, yeah. We need to put it up. Given, uh, Pastor Bishop Sonia said that she will, she said, I will sow $100 seed on the profundity she poured out on tonight. Where and how do we give? So people are ready. Reverend Tracy Ruffin wants to know, how do we give? Pastor Erica said, if everyone were to give at least $84, we would raise the $4,000. Yes. That's, that's yes, our yes. banker. She telling us <laughs> right she the rip. She is she is a true banker. Is what she do for a living. It's enough of us on the call. On the I'm sorry. On this live. On this live stream. On this show to make this happen tonight. Uh, uh, the gifts, the callings that just came from this woman of God. We cannot deny. You cannot deny that it is a gift. And so let's yes. Ber Professor Burgita said we ready. The saints are ready. They are ready Can I ask you, let me ask Can you ask this you way. way. Um, Dr. Alicia Lola Jones, dollar sign, Dr. Alicia Lola Jones. Again, dollar sign, Dr. Mm -hmm. Alicia Lola Jones. Is that is that Cash App, PayPal? What is that? Cash That's App? Cash App. Yes, ma'am. Again, Dollar sign, Dr. Alicia Lola Jones. We got that? That's Cash App. 
And there's also a PayPal, as I'm understanding it. Yes. And how is the PayPal labeled? It's Paradise Radio Network at Gmail. If you just send it to that um, it is. Gmail. Everybody yeah. see it? Let's, let's breathe in and out for a minute. And so we can write this down and make sure that we get it. You got Cash App and PayPal. Cash App and PayPal. We'll send ours this evening as well. Cash Thank App you. and PayPal. So that by the time they wake up tomorrow morning, the bill will be paid. The bill will be paid. What we believe in, we have to sow into. That's what we must do. That's where our freedom happens. That's where our liberty happens. And you have to know that when you give, and I have learned this, when you give as unto the Lord, the old folks used to say, you can't beat God giving. I have learned, I have learned the just ones live by their faith. I want to encourage you tonight. Let's be a blessing. Let's let the, the enemy of our freedom know that we're also prepared to do what we need to do. I know God has blessed you with the money. I know those of you that are giving are living under the umbrella of miracles, signs, and wonders. I know that. I know people who are getting income who's, who lost their jobs and they're still paying their bills. The same God, that God that made a way for us has now enabled us to make a way for someone else. Let's do this because we are in this together. This, the presence of the Lord, the spirit of, the God, of our God maketh rich. I like that. And adds no sorrow. God bless you. Give is holy work. God mm -hmm. bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you for even letting me say something. Thank you. Oh, thank you for thank you for knowing that you at home. This is family. We got it like that. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Bishop Vanessa, for working to do what needed to be done to to have Reverend Dr. Alicia Lola Jones in the middle of the morning. It's, she's in the middle of the morning where she is. <laughs> To be with us, how beautiful, how good, and how pleasant it is for us to dwell together in unity. God bless. I thank God for your yes, Reverend Dr. Alicia. When I call, when I text you, you know, I know you be busy over there, but once I see something, I'm gonna stay on it until I get it. And so I am grateful that you said yes. God bless you, Pastor Calvin Taylor Skinner. We love you, and we love your wife. Want you to know that he's over he here. here. He on YouTube. Stuff, the putting stuff in there, yes. And so we are grateful. Um, we know we can't. You know. So again, you already said this centers black women, but essentially, it really is since it, it centers black people. Absolutely, right? it, sends, it centers us, and so we have to take care of us, right? Yes, yes. And so I am. It is my joy, of course, to to be a participant. I've, I've sold my seed already. Um, others have sold their seed. Everybody is done. Everybody's done, done. I love it. I love to see it. Done, Thank done. You, it's so oh, wow. good. I see. I see. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, oh wow. wow. Thank you, guys, so much. Yes. And as and I'm reading, really, I do want to say that both of you have been such a huge encouragement to uh, my husband and I in this move, uh, again, it has taken a village, whether it has been just an encouraging word, just an I see you, I do feel as though uh, you are investors in this vision. Thank you for mm -hmm. actually responding and thank you for um, helping to teach us how to show up for each other. Uh, my sister and I have been doing this work because of we we love our father not for anything else and um these people have really demonstrated for us what ministry is and what community is and so thank you for responding to what the enemy might have wanted to be a threat we know the trick of the enemy um but we ready and we're showing up to court they don't think we will show up to court we've already shown up they didn't think we were going to show up because we keep our stuff together and we're going to fight it Good. And you'll win. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. 
Indeed. Indeed. God did not give us the spirit of fear. Hallelujah. Now, Reverend Dr. Alicia, people are asking about the class. So put yes. the link for the class because people want to sign up for the class too. Okay. Um, I think, I think my husband is about to put it in the chat. Uh, it's on the event events uh, part of my website, dralicia.com. Um, or you can email me at Dr. Alicia, D-R-A-L-I-S-H-A, at D-R-A-L-I-S-H-A dot com. Um, and I just, I just want to say that um, thank you guys for even um, thinking with me about these sorts of issues. There's so much that I want to share um, and that I believe uh, will lead to our healing, our deliverance, our vitality, our rejoicing, our fullness of joy, our fullness of joy, saints. Um, and I'm just humble. We are humble. I mean, Pastor Calvin is over here rejoicing with me um, for this response. Um, and so thank you. Thank you so much. We might be able to talk her into uh, uh, physically or virtually joining us for our leadership conference coming oh, up in, awesome. in July. That would yes, be awesome. Absolutely. We would, I do, you know, I do that. July, <laughs> and my mother. So it's, but coming to be with us in August, but we have a a, a banner that's going to go up in a minute, so you can see it. But let's let's chat, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You're okay. being with us in August in Las Vegas. Yeah, yes. I love Las Vegas. Let a whole lot of folks <laughs> talk about that. How about that? Yes. God yes. bless. God bless. So we God want bless. you all to support. Continue to support the broadcast. We appreciate everything that you're doing. We'll be back on next week. Uh, we're going to make sure that we talk about our leadership conference. Pastor Sue is going to uh, show us the slide, but before she does that, um, I just want to make sure that I say that the, we are lined up for the month and for next month, and it's looking great. And next week, our guest is Dr. Camille Hernandez, the hero and the whore. Dr. Camille Hernandez, the hero and the whore. And I want you all to come back on next week and join us. Let's fin finish out Women's Her Story Month. Uh, we have the Amen Effect coming to us. Ancient Wisdom to Mend Our Broken Hearts and World by Rabbi Sharon Bruce. So yes. we, we got so many great things for this month alone. And so we want to see you here with us every week. Keep sharing. Keep letting folks know how to find us on social media. And so now Pastor Sue will come and give us this last announcement and Bishop Flunder will make it. God bless each of you. Uh, we very, very much want you to pay attention to this particular announcement because our TFAM Leadership Conference will be taking place August 5th through the 10th in Las Vegas, Nevada. And again, we wanna encourage you, pay attention, Keep watching the TFAM websites and everything that is online so that you can find out more about where we are going to be, what we are going to expect to have happen, what we are expecting from our colleagues, from the presence of God, from the White House, from uh, Bishop Barber and those that will be working. And those of you who are leaders of organizations, of denominations, of of movements that are inclusive in their orientation, uh, in their understandings, in their spirituality. The very first week of that leadership conference, the fifth, we are going to gather together so that we can speak cogently and clearly into this atmosphere that is seeking to destroy people who are given to radical and radically inclusive ministry. We also have a voice that needs to bring all of us into this conversation in powerful ways. So again, August 5th through the 10th, Las Vegas, Nevada, we'll finish signing the contracts tomorrow for the hotel. You'll know more and more as we go along. Stay close, keep listening. Let's be prepared for such a time as this. Save the dates. God bless you.
We want to thank you all once again for joining us. You have been a total and complete blessing. Thank you for staying for as long as you did. Listen, this is always up. So you can go back and listen, go back and have a conversation with somebody else about it. Make sure you sign up for the class. Go to Dr. Alicia, D-R-A-L-S-I-S-H-A dot com. Dr. Alicia dot com. You'll find out more information about the class. You see all the ways in which you can sew um, in terms of giving. We pl place everything is in the chat. It's all right there. Just got to scroll down and you'll see all the information given. Thank you, Bishop Flunder. Thank you. Reverend Dr. Alicia Lola Jones, we appreciate you so very much. Thank you, Mother Miller. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> she waving. I see her. God bless. Thank you all so much. And thank you to our audience. Thank you to Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and everywhere else where we can be found. Twitter, Spotify, we love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Have a great evening.